Welcome everyone to Gamer Metal. Today, AMD's Smart Access Memory gets tested on Ryzen 3000, why AMD's DLSS equivalent isn't here yet, Ryzen 6000, a full new lineup of AMD GPUs, and two new Nvidia cards set to challenge miners. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, when AMD announced their RX 6700 XT GPU, they also announced that their resizable bar tech, called Smart Access Memory, will be supported on their Zen 2 based Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Well, in a new report by Igor's lab, they were able to test out the performance difference in Borderlands 3 with different resolutions, and as you can see, there is a sizable difference. And not just in the average FPS, but also in minimum FPS, though the 5000 series gets a bit more performance, at least when paired with an AMD GPU. Of course, Nvidia just released their RTX 3060, which also comes with resizable bar support, and Igor's lab did test it. Here though, there isn't much of a difference. Really, it's almost just margin of error. Of course, this is just one game, but at least with an AMD GPU, FPS does get a real performance jump. And that's obviously great news for anyone with a current Ryzen 3000 CPU. Of course, that isn't nearly as good as getting free money with today's sponsor, Honey the free browser extension that automatically saves you money when buying online, and it couldn't be easier. All you have to do is install Honey for free in just a couple clicks. Then the next time you're checking out on one of their 30,000 plus supported sites, Honey will scour the internet to find working coupon codes, and if it does, Honey applies them and you get free money. That's really it. Plus, with over 100,000 five-star reviews, what are you waiting for? You're losing money by not joining Honey. So get Honey for free today by visiting joinhoney.com slash gamermeld. And a huge thanks to Honey for sponsoring this video. Next up, while talking the new RX 6700 XT, AMD briefly showed a slide that mentions their new super resolution, which is set to be AMD's equivalent to Nvidia's DLSS, but they didn't actually announce the feature. Well, in a recent video from Linus Tech Tips that goes over the new launch, Linus revealed why AMD hasn't released their DLSS equivalent just yet. According to him, AMD's goal is to launch the tech across all platforms, meaning all of their GPUs the new consoles, etc. And as Linus mentions, holding off may be for the better, given the poor launch of Nvidia's first DLSS iteration. Either way, it's clear that AMD is working on it. Let's just hope it comes before their RX 7000 GPUs. Next up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that there's been a couple stories on a supposedly upcoming Zen 3 Plus, which would either be some kind of Ryzen 5000 XT or Ryzen 6000 series of CPUs. In the original story, we heard that Zen 3 Plus would be based on TSMC's 6 nanometer node. Well, in a recent interview with AMD's Mark Papermaster at the Morgan Stanley Tech Conference, he randomly mentioned 6 nanometers. Now, he goes on to talk the 5 nanometer Zen 4, but it's certainly odd that he mentions it like that. Then, in the older roadmap that's proven to be right in the past, we can see that there's a secondary Zen 3 based desktop lineup codenamed Warhol. Now, here it says 7 nanometers, but the mobile variant that's expected soon after is 6 nanometers and still ultimately based on Zen 3. And as we know, AMD's mobile variant is usually based on the same process as AMD's desktop chips, if not slightly upgraded. So I'm thinking this should say 6 nanometers. Basically, it's looking more and more like Zen 3 Plus is a thing, and that it will likely be based on TSMC's 6 nanometer process. Time, as always, will tell. Next up for today, it looks like AMD could be working on a full new lineup of GPUs similar to Nvidia. And when I say similar to Nvidia, I mean a lineup of mining GPUs. The story was originally published by 4Onyx and later Tom's Hardware. And according to this, AMD added a new Navi 12 SKU to their recent Linux kernel driver. The interesting part about this is that it doesn't have support for Video Core Next, which means it won't have any type of video output. And that points to mining cars because miners don't use GPUs to actually render a scene, so they can simply use the video out on their motherboard, given the CPU has an iGPU. Not only that, but apparently AMD added a Navi 10 part with the same thing late last year. All of this adds up to a line of AMD-based mining GPUs. 
The only issue is that we didn't hear anything about AMD potentially limiting the mining performance for their gaming cards like Nvidia. With that said, these do seem to be based on first gen Navi, and second gen isn't that great for mining anyway. This would also mean AMD will likely be using old stock for GPUs, so it shouldn't affect the RX 6000 series. And speaking of limiting GPUs, I've got a couple stories that show Nvidia isn't done when it comes to fighting miners in today's last story. And before I get to it, remember that we found out all but one of Nvidia's new mining GPUs come with last gen's Turing architecture, which isn't even made by the same company as their RTX 3000 cards, meaning they won't be taking many cards from the new Ampere series, hopefully none since it is only one card based on the RTX 3080's GPU. Either way, today's story comes from resident leaker copite 7 Kimmy, and it's an update to the recent update on Nvidia's upcoming RTX 3080 Ti specs. And of course, while this isn't guaranteed, copite 7 Kimmy has proven himself many times in the past when it comes to Nvidia GPUs. Anyway, in the post, he states that the RTX 3080 Ti comes with 12 gigabytes of 19 gigabit VRAM, and the big news is right here, that it comes with the Ethereum mining nerf. Not only that, but video cards confirmed with AIB partners that they recently received this nerf, and that the RTX 3070 Ti will come with it as well. That shows just how serious Nvidia is when it comes to their GeForce cards. With all of that said, the RTX 3060 obviously sold out extremely fast regardless. Of course, even before mining got this popular, demand from gamers was at an all-time high, so that could be it. That or miners are simply willing to sacrifice a 50% performance decrease. Either way, this is still mostly good news as it should at least give gamers the edge when it comes to buying these GPUs. Now we just need more of them. So while that does it for today, are you happy that there's new cards to potentially fight off miners or do you think it won't help at all? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, make sure to check out the GamerMail Discord server. And as always, have a great day!